Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh brothers and sisters Welcome to Ramadan wa Tahir I am your host Sadat Muhammad And alongside me are guests you've also seen before And there's still wonderful guests here with me And I'll start off with Madam Sirajuddin Welcome back and thank you so much for being here It's a pleasure And we have Miss Aisha Thank you so much for having me And she's me. taking us through a beautiful journey today That would be coming up but without any further ado, before we go on our break, do try to follow us on our social media platform to keep in touch with us and, of course, get all the latest gists from us as well. This is Ramadan Mutahir. We'll be taking this quick break and we'll be back with you shortly. Stay tuned. Welcome back from the break. A lot of us might be in a situation where we just, you know, spark off and get angry over very little things. Now, that should hint you into the word of the day today, anger. But here's a question for you. How do you control yourself when you're angry? And I am Sadat Muhammad, your host of the show. What more can you ask me? <laughs> well, we'll be moving on into our sermon session right about now with Malam Sirajuddin. <laughs> Alhamdulillah ala nimatil Islam. Summa salam ala ashrafil muslim. Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabi wa kulli man tababili inzan illa yawmi wa azun. What we are going to discuss today is uh, the tips for maximizing reward in Ramadan. Uh, Ramadan, as we all know, is uh, a command from Allah that we can see from Surah to Baqarah, Quran to us. Allah says, But I was believing in a shaitan regime. Ya hayu al-ladina amanu kutiba alaykum musiyam kama kutiba ala ladina min kablikum la lakum tatakum. Allah says that month of Ramadan is Fisharul Qur'an, is a month of Qur'an. Allah says, O oh, you who believe, Ya you al-ladina amanu, kutiba alaykum musiyya. We have prescribed fasting for you, kama kutiba ala ladina min kablikum. As we have prescribed fasting for those before you, it shows that all the other prophets, they fasted. Like we heard about Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, which is popularly known as Jesus Christ, that he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. We have so many other prophets too that fasted, but Allah has made the fasting of Ramadan the seal because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Atam al-Anbiya wa Imam al is the seal of prophethood. The main reason for Ramadan is to attain piety because there is no fasting for somebody who doesn't fear Allah. There is no salat for somebody who doesn't fear Allah because we see so many of our leaders today they still pray, and yet they still embezzle public funds because the fear of Allah is not there. And the fear of Allah is the beginning of wisdom. So part of the thing that will make us excel, get more reward in Ramadan, is Salat. Salat is key because we have said it severally that awalu yuazibu yam al kiyama as Salat. That the first thing we are going to be made to account for in the day of Yam al Kiyama is Salat. So, praying our Salat to time will corroborate our fasting. There are so many people that fast today, but they don't pray. And Salat is very, very important. It's compulsory because in a Salat, Tani Anili Fanshai Wal Munkar Wala Dikrulai Akbar. Salat is something that if you pray, it's going to take you away from every form of evil and 
is the highest form of remembering Allah. Then another thing that is very good that will make you get more reward in Ramadan is to do Sawur. Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, wa fi Sawur fi baraka. He said, in taking Sawur, there is baraka. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, my people will continue to be upon goodness and when they hasten to break their fast and they slow to take their sahur. May Allah give us better understanding and make us have a fulfilled Ramadan. Allahumma rubbana la tskulubana bada izi adaitana wa abulana min ladun karamata innaka antal wahab. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Wa anna safka wa tubilik. Wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Delicacy, delicacy, delicacy. Let's move on to Let's Cook with our chef and find out what he's having today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Let's Cook with Ramadan Mutahir. I am the chef, Chef B, and today I'll be making special basmati fried rice. For this special meal, I'll be making use of Parboiled basmati rice, vegetable oil, scrambled egg, a large chicken sausage, green pea, carrot, sweet corn, onion, some fried rice spice, seasoning powder, sweet meat bell pepper, light soy sauce, spring onion, oyster sauce, and sesame oil. First thing I'm putting is vegetable oil. So the process I'm using for this meal is called stir frying, whereby the only thing I just need is to parboil my main recipe, which is the rice. Add vegetable oil, then add all the ingredients that's stir frying. That's the process whereby I'm not adding water into what I'm cooking. So after that, I'm going to put in the sliced onion, then double spoon to mix up. So the next thing I'm going to add is the halal um, sausage. I need to fry it a little. The chicken sausage is halal. You can always check the pack while you purchase one and please make sure you check the expiring date also. So the next thing I'm going to put in with my nicely cut spring um, carrots. So after that, I'm going to put in some fresh beans. So. so the next ingredient, of course, I'm adding my seasoning powder. So for this, I'm not using curry and thyme so if you don't have a fried rice spice you can put your curry and thyme but because I have one I'll just put some I don't like my fried rice to be too green so after this I'm going to put the rice
in our stir. So you give the rice a good mix. Just look at that. So after that, my green pea, then the sweet corn. I'll be adding the bell pepper, light soy sauce. Then the scrambled egg. This egg was just fried with a little bit of oil. I rubbed um, vegetable oil rubbed on the pan without any seasoning, salt, or anything. Just plain. So it will be the last thing I'm adding to it. Then I'll give it another good mix. So guys, just look at that. So some people call this egg fried rice. You, you can name it anything, but I call it special basmati fried rice or basmati special fried rice. Anyway. So our basmati fried rice is ready. Wow, this is looking really nice. I'm going to dish out in this frying round plate. If you are just joining us, we made basmati special fried rice. Now we have our basmati fried rice paired with some chicken wings. I hope you guys enjoy your iftar. You can follow us on all our platforms at the UMA Network. And you can also follow me on Instagram at Chevy Catering Services. Ramadan Mubarak. Welcome back from the break. That was Let's Cook with our chef. But you see that moi moi thing? I'm going to try it. But yeah, um, right about now, moving on to our discussion session with Miss Aisha. What do you have for us today? I want to talk about sisterhood. So from my own definition of sisterhood, it's just sisterhood is a special, in quotes, special relationship. Mm. We connote love, trust, understanding, accountability, and the um, union so if we want to talk really talk about sister we, we just have to clear our intention if i'm coming to you with my gravians my hunger you should be able to calm it down mm. we should be able to listen to one another because if you listen well you'll be able to understand where i'm actually coming from so that is where accountability come in anyway. Then you, we need to bond hope. The love that we have for each other, we should nurture it very well. Mm. People get disappointed at any slight mistake. Because if you love somebody so much, you won't want the person to get hurt. True. You won't want the person to be sad. You won't want the person to, to, to do what is not right according to the Sharia. And that is what we as, as sisters should try and just monitor within herself. Because we're going to account to allow whatever we are actually doing, both in this life and here after. So as for sisters, I do, tell, I do tell people that for me, I love people around me. Mm. And for the fact that I grew up with my grandmother, and she always tell me that if you create people, if you build people, they, are, they will always be there for you any, any time, any day. Mm. Sisterhood is just about helping each other. Mm. Helping each other grow. Even if it's going to involve business, if it's going to involve relationship, just try and bond up. That's just it. Quite interesting. Now, right about now, we'll be moving on to Sheikh Speaks. And as soon as we're back, we'll be moving on to Word of the Day. This is Ramadan Mutahir. Do stay tuned. We'll be back with you shortly. <laughs> I 
أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستكفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم Wabadu assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu My dear brothers and sisters uh, in Islam I welcome you to this program in which inshallah we are going to discuss Hajj lessons and objectives I am by name Tamim Yusuf Al-Hassan the Deputy Chief Imam Muslim Community Centre Mosque Wusaydan 3 Abuja, Nigeria popularly known as for Adla Babidi Islamic uh, Academy. Uh, distinguished brothers and sisters, let me start by congratulating all of us, especially those who performed this year's Hajj for successful completion of the rites of Hajj of 1,440 years after the Hijra of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, equivalent to 2019. Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, I congratulate such uh, personalities for this successful uh, completion of the uh, rites of Hajj. May Allah the Most High accept from all of those who performed Hajj and those who have not been able to perform. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all the rituals that they performed uh, within the period when our brothers and sisters are on, were on Hajj. Uh, and then I also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable them and to give them opportunity to visit the Holy Land to perform uh, the rites of Hajj, which is one of the pillars of Islam, alhamdulillah. Now, my distinguished brothers and sisters, as you all know, Hajj is one of the pillars of Islam. By the text of the glorious Quran and the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the Quran, Allah the Most High says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa lillahi ala nasi hajj al-bayt man istata'a ilayhi sabila and hajj is uh, made compulsory obligatory on a nas that is mankind man istata'a ilayhi sabila for those whom Allah the Most High made it easy and give them the means of so doing another great objective of hajj is taqwa if you go through the verses of Hajj in, Sur in Surat al-Baqarah, you see how Allah the Most High repeats, is taqwa, taqwa, wa taqun ya ul al-bawf, taqwa, wa tazawwadu fa inna khaira zari, taqwa, piety. What does piety mean? For you to restrict yourself, do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you and stay away from whatever Allah says you should not do. Hajj, another great objective of Hajj is that it teaches you to be always in total remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dhikr, dhikr, dhikr. Go through those verses and see how Allah the Most High repeat dhikr, dhikr. So you, in essence, we should be seen as completely changed individuals as Muslims by performing hajj, not just going, you do tawaf, you do hajj, you do uh, sa'i, you do whatever, and you come back empty. No, that is not the essence of hajj. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, the lessons and the objectives are so many. The little, the little ones we are able to take, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to comprehend them and to put them into practice and to accept our righteous deed and to forgive our shortcomings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. That was Sheikh Speaks. Now, moving on to word of the day, I asked you a question earlier. How do you control your anger? Now, anger, as we know it, is an emotion. Emotions are meant to be expressed, but can be suppressed, no matter what it is. And we also know that in the Quran, Allah has spoken about anger as much as well. Anger leads you to either do something you're not supposed to, 
you're going to regret. You might say something that might last a lifetime into someone's soul. In fact, something you might say might even threaten someone to the point of even taking their own lives. It doesn't mean that just because you didn't get your way or get that revenge or make that person feel exactly the way you did, then it's an achievement. No, Allah blesses those who can control and be in control of their emotions, no matter what it is. Uh, what would you say would be another way man can actually calm his nerves? Because we also see that in marriages, we say, don't go to bed angry. But we have situations where the husband or the wife even goes one week <laughs> with anger. They sleep and wake up and they're still angry. They pretend to be okay with each other. Before you know it, the kids are there and they're insulting each other left and right. What could you say would be one way to, you know, calm the nerves easily? I think understanding, yeah. When there is mutual understanding between both parties, I think they will be able to suppress the anger and the way they communicate mm. should be improved as well. Mm. And they should try as much as possible to remarry themselves. If you keep remarrying yourself, you remember, you go back to where you started from, where you are. Do you actually want this? to go home like this. Quite interesting. So uh, be careful out there and know how to control your emotions. Anger breaks a whole lot of homes, relationships, and name it, friendship. You can take courses on emotional intelligence. Eh? Actually, yeah, actually, yes. Good. That's also another human perspective to look into. Anger management classes, very, very important just to calm your nerves. Remember, we're not perfect human beings. We are uh, servants who have been sent here to this world to worship and we could die at any time so know exactly what you're taking back to meeting your Lord and know exactly what you're going to say or do before you pass away from this world Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh we will be moving into instructional Quran right about now before we call it a wrap for this session do stay tuned this is Ramadan Matahir we'll be back with you shortly Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to these wonderful segments of Ramadan Mutahir called Instructional Quran on Ummah TV. I'm your host, Ustad Jamal Sheath. Uh, Instructional Quran, like I always say, is a show designed to bring about you know, the wonderful instructions, instructions from the glorious Quran to use it as you know, points to edify and, and improve our lives in the process. Today we're going to be talking about something interesting that Allah is saying. So Allah is saying, do not be miserly. Do not be miserly. Miserliness, Mizzle, you know, stinginess, as in the, the, the layman parlance, is not Islamic. You get, you must never be selfish or greedy, because selfishness also leads to greediness. So Allah is saying, do not be miserly. So those who are, who are miserly, niggardly, and beat others to be niggardly and conceal their bounty which Allah has bestowed upon them. So those who are, you know, are stingy, they're selfish, yeah, they're miserly, they, 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 don't will, they, they do not spend on the poor. I say those who are miserly and niggardly and also, you know, enjoin others to do the same. So when they don't, don't, don't spend on the cause of Allah, they don't help the poor, they're not generous people, they're very stingy, but, and yet they also go out to encourage others to be like them, to be stingy as well. You know, don't give your money to them, keep your money, your money's yours, and all that, all that, you know, exaltation that they, they, they give one another. Allah is saying, those are the ones who are miserly and also command others to be miserly and also conceal what Allah has blessed them with. So some persons have money to buy a wonderful car, for instance, but decides not to buy it because he doesn't want to have people see that he's wealthy or that he has money, you know, just to, you know, so that, so that they don't come to bail him, for instance, to say, help us, because, you know, so he tried to conceal Allah's blessing on him, tried to conceal it so that people will not see it. So, Allah says, for those people, we have, you know, kept in readiness for them, humiliating ch chastisements for such denies of Allah's bounty, for those who are always concealing Allah's favors upon them. So Allah says, we have prepared for them a chastisement of fire. They will be in a fire. That's what Allah, al muhina, you know, a very humiliating uh, punishment that, that Allah would have, uh, has, has kept in stock for them. So Allah is saying that we should not be, you know, miserly, you know. And, and there's, there's a popular thing that we've been said in the world today that, you know, the more you give, the more it comes in. The Prophet said, in in the I in the, said, giving out sadaqah, giving out charity does not reduce wealth. The more you give, the more you get. That's the, that's the ruling of the world. So those who don't give certainly do not get. 
So Allah says you have to constantly give. Allah says, Man the levi yukrid Allah qrid al hasana faydu'ifu lahu adafan kathira. So who amongst you is going to loan Allah a goodly loan so that Allah can multiply it in many folds, sometimes 700,000 700, folds, sometimes even much more, 70,000 folds. That Allah is going to increase your wealth. So the more you give, and the only way you can give Allah a loan is by giving others, you know, helping others. Be, you know, live wonderful lives, you know, do not be miserly, Allah said. So Allah is saying that those who are miserly, Allah has prepared for them humiliating punishment that, that would affect them in the hereafter. Even from this world, you know, you're about to have a very popular statement that me, the one who is miserly has no, has, no, has no integrity. People do not, you know, value them. They have no value in society. You get because when you because the reason Allah has made us is to be most beneficial to other humans. So when you are not generous to other humans, you're not most beneficial to other humans, and as such, you're useless as a human being in a societal context. So Allah, the Prophet also said, "He said, said the best amongst you are the most beneficial to the people." So and that's why we have to always learn to be very generous, give out to the poor, and whatever we're giving, we sure know that Allah is going to return it manifold, and that's Allah's. Allah's what? That's Allah's promise, and Allah does not fill in His promise. So that's how far we're going to be going on this episode of Instruction of Quran and Ummah TV. Uh, I know you've been able to pick a word or two about the importance of not being miserly. Allah does not want us to be miserly. Allah wants us to spend on the poor, to be generous, because when we do spend on the poor and are generous, it comes back to us many fold. Uh, I do pray that Allah will make this easy for us, both the speaker and the listener, and may Allah bless us in this holy month. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We've come to the end of the session for this session and thank you so much for being with us. A big shout out to you, our dear viewers. Do follow us on our social media platform, don't forget that, and stay in touch with us. This is Ramadan Mutahir. I am Sadat Muhammad. Do have a wonderful day.